Hey guys, we've done logging before, but this one's straight to the point, quick, very specific to Windows event logs. You can look at my other logging video, it'll get you what you need, but this is going to be very streamlined for those that are looking for event logs, and it is in .NET 7. First thing you must do is you must make sure that your Windows event logs in your registry does have the event log source. The source is usually the name of your application, but it could be anything that you want to call it. Something that's easy to find when you're searching your event logs, when you've actually logged something, so you can find it quickly. So you can do this by creating the source, checking if the source exists, creating the source in Visual Studio as part of your program. But Microsoft recommends that this already exists, this event log source already exists before you try to log to it, and that there is somewhat of a delay. They don't specify what that delay should be, so for that reason, I do not recommend adding, you know, a thread.sleep after adding the event source via code. Personally, I find it easier just to keep all that out of your application, just run it in PowerShell and say, here, we're going to add this event log source. You can, however, put in your code a check to see if that event log exists and add it, then exit the application. That's fine. But that just means the user is going to have to run it again. And you're going to have to have some user interface to tell the user why you quit the program when they were trying to run it in the first place. So for this video, we're going to add that event log source with PowerShell. And then we will log to the event log using our application. So go ahead and hit start and type PowerShell. You don't want the um, ISE, uh, the Windows PowerShell is fine for what we're doing right now right click on it and go run as administrator you need administrative rights for this operation okay let me make this a little bigger and here's the here's the command you're going to do new dash event log with capitalization on the n and the e dash source and then here's where you're going to put the name of your log then i know it says log name application but this will make sense in a moment so the data the log source is going to be you know the quote unquote name of your log and then log name is application. That's one that comes with it. I switched over to the event viewer. If you're not familiar, just hit start, type event. You'll probably see event viewer there. It will open this application. It comes with Windows. This is how you view event logs. Um, you're going to expand on the left Windows logs. When I say it comes with it, this is what I mean. Here's application here on your top left under Windows logs. So when you say in your command prompt that you're specifying the log to be application and your event source to be whatever it is that you're calling it whatever your log name is that means like if you were to look at anything that's been logged if this this is a, probably a horrible example but this is the group policy update the log names application and the one that you're specifying in this case would be this g update so maybe this this source instead of saying G update will say Joe Smith's application. Okay. All right. So as you can see, I quickly swapped over my open project to a web project that has a bunch of stuff in it. Doesn't really matter what's in it. It's just that if we're doing a console application, you're going to have to do one of these uh, set up one of these builders like a web application upgrade builder or some other kind of builder pipeline in order to do it the way that I'm showing. If you're interested in just a more basic console application logging for Windows event logs, shoot me a comment and I can make a maybe a YouTube short on, on how to set that up or just a regular YouTube video that's a little shorter than this one. But I thought that web application logging is going to be a bit more common. So we're logging to the event Windows event logs on the web server that this is hosted in, which is probably going to be in IAS. But it's really the same thing. And in your development environment, it's going to be logging to your workstation's event logs. So anywhere before the builder.build statement, you can drop this in anywhere after we've defined the builder. So anywhere between create builder that I have up here and builder.build. Anywhere in there, you're going to add the following line of code. Builder.logging.add event log. And if you don't care what the log is called, then that's it. You can just make it a one-liner like that. But for me, I'm going to define it to be what we put into our PowerShell earlier. I believe I saved that 
in the notepad here for us. Data vid sample app. That's the exact same thing what we use for our source name in the PowerShell call. So let's save that there. And before we run this, because I mean that's really it. That's the that's the code that you need right there. But before we run this thing, go to your app settings.json and you're going to go over to logging and we're going to add an additional piece of information under logging here. You're going to put <clears throat> event log. And under event log, you're going to do this whole log level thing. So you can actually remove this if you want to. So what we're saying is by default, warning is the minimum level that Microsoft says will be used. So it'll log errors, it'll log warnings, but if you tell your logger that you've injected into your controller or your service to log an information, it will be ignored and it will not be written to the event log. But what we're saying here is we want to log information. If you don't care about that, if you're only logging errors, you can skip this step and just continue on to where we start injecting our logger service and start calling the logger. But I'm allowing information to be logged this way as well. Now let's go on and inject this now. So if you come back to program.cs, you can see that we added it to our builder here, which means it's been added as a service, so it's available to be injected into other services and into controllers. If you're not familiar with dependency injection, I do have other videos on that that you can check out. Just go back to my channel and search for dependency injection. Pretty simple concept. Once you get used to it, you'll love it. I'm going to go to my index controller, but because this is a Razor Pages thing here that we're looking at, it's going to be um, actually the code behind for my index page. Works the same way. Um, as a MVC applications controller as far as injection is concerned. So whenever you inject a logger, you always have your private read-only iLogger, and then inside these is always going to be the name of the class. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And we're going to inject logger here, and then we can use it. So on get is going to be called when my index page is loaded, so I can log something immediately if I want to. Um, but if I wanted to use this in a service, then it's probably not going to have this. You're going to have to just write it. You can copy and paste it from here to your service. Just make sure to pay attention to the class name because the class name of your service is not going to be index model. It'll probably be data service or API service or something like that. And you just have to update these when you copy and paste that. But you can still call it logger in multiple classes like that. So. I could do logger dot um, log information, and I can just do uh, data vids testing information, and then if I wanted to log an error that includes a stack trace, um, maybe you want to do a try catch, uh, and then you'll have an exception. But just so I can create an exception, I can do some kind of silly code like this. And I realize this is not realistic, but it could be. I'll show you what I mean. So in here, you'd have, you know, call some method. And let's say that method calls a whole series of things in your services and it, the bubbles up and this is the top level of being bubbled up. Then in here in our exception, I could logger dot log error. And we could log the, uh, the message. And you'll want to for sure check for null references if you're going to look at the inner exception, because not all exceptions have an inner exception, inner exception etc. Um, and let's say you wanted to put the stack trace. You know, you could do things like uh, you could do a string interpolation here to set up a nice pretty string that has a message and then some information that you've custom put in about your application situation and then the x dot stack trace so there's a lot of things you can do with this um, for right now since we're just testing this thing i'm going to force an exception so let's do throw new exception 
data vids exception. All right, and now let's put a breakpoint here, and I'm going to run the application. Okay, we've hit our breakpoint. Make it a little bigger. We'll log the information. We'll catch, we'll throw an exception, catch that exception, and log it. Okay, we're all done with that. Now let's go back to our event logs. Hit start, type event, go to your event viewer, go to Windows Logs, expand that, click on application. This might actually take a while to load depending on how your Windows environment set up and how fast your computer is, that kind of thing. But rest assured, it will show up. Um, so right at the very top, the most recent thing we did was the error. As you can see, data viz exception. That is great. And one below it is the information, data vids testing information. Now, just real quick to show you what I was talking about, why don't we pop back over here and go to the app settings JSON and we'll change the minimum to uh, warning. And let's run it again. We're back to our on get. It'll still allow me to log the information. It's just not gonna do anything with it. You can also add multiple log providers if you want to log to more than just the Windows event logs and do something with information, uh, maybe console log or something like that. You can then just have, an, have another app settings.json for beyond the event logs for another type of logging and set that to information. But anyway, since we turned it to minimum warning, it's going to log this exception here, but it's not going to log the information. So I'm come back here. If I hit F5, it will refresh this. And as you can see, there's an error and there's not an information between the error and the previous error based on the time set here, which shows that it was ignored because we didn't set the minimum information. For global exception handling, different types of logging, or even creating a middleware that catches exceptions and logs errors, I'd like for you to watch my other logging video. So I encourage you to go to the DataVids channel and just look for logging videos. There's only a couple of them out there. All right. Well, have a great day. Hope this was helpful.